If you look at everything that's happening with Netflix, Vimeo, Hulu, Snapchat stories, it really means that video has become the sort of go-to medium for millennials. It's how they're informed, they educate, um, and they entertain themselves. And actually, it chimes entirely with what old Mr. Zuckerberg says, which really is about the future of online being all about video content. So kind of then what happens when they go into the classroom? They have those same expectations. They expect rich media content. They expect to be informed and entertained. Um, unfortunately, quite often when they get there, that's not the case. But we know that all the infrastructure is in place to deliver that sort of video content. So we have interactive whiteboards. We have broadband connectivity. Um, and when video is being used, it's really appreciated. That mixture of moving images and sound, it really engages. It brings the real world to life. It brings ideas and events and people back into the classroom. Um, and let's take something like, I don't know, terminal velocity, a really abstract subject. There's no better way of illustrating something like that than actually seeing Felix Baumgartner jumping out the Red Bull balloon from space. It's really, really powerful. Now, the trouble is that... For instructors, the go-to platform at the moment for them for video content, when they want to use it, which they do, is YouTube. Now, YouTube is only, in US institutions, allowed through the firewall of about 50% of academic institutions. It obviously carries advertising. In the world of fake news, some of the content is perhaps a little bit unreliable. Um, and it certainly doesn't have an education focus. So if I want to look up the fact that Donald Trump um, has recently fired the uh, FBI, head of the FBI, I might not actually see Jim Comey, I might actually see sort of Donald Trump with some cat memes. So, you know, there are some challenges there with the algorithm as well. So, um, actually that provides a fantastic opportunity for education providers. And by education providers, I mean publishers, transitioning to digital, LMS platforms, adaptive learning platforms, even interactive whiteboard suppliers to put video front and center in all their products and services and save a whole load of time and effort for instructors. But the trouble is when they look into the video production marketplace, it's quite fragmented. Um, where do they go to find that clip of Felix Baumgartner jumping through space? Do they go to CNN? Do they go to Felix Baumgartner's agent? Do they go to Red Bull? It's not clear. So there's a discovery issue. Are the rights cleared? Copyright is a challenging area in video. And what should they pay? Should they pay the same license fees that program makers and advertisers do, even though the economics in education are very, very different? What basically Bo Clips does is help those education providers discover, license, and use the very best video content from around the world in their digital resources. So if you like, it's the bridge between, on the left-hand side, some of the most respected video names from around the world. Many you'll be familiar with, the BBC, PBS, uh, Bloomberg News, etc., etc., and the education ecosystem. Bo Clips today aggregates 2 million short-form pieces of content, pieces of video, in a single cloud-based platform. That's about 50,000 hours of programming. Um, it's about, today, 36 different content producers. It uses algorithms to cur curate that content to any set of courseware or curriculum by market around the world. We're able to integrate that into any uh, educational digital product and deliver either by download and embed into an e textbook or to stream directly into the classroom. The critical thing is that all of the rights contained within our video content are cleared for the education, per, uh, education marketplace, which removes a huge headache from the industry. And all the pricing is common across all of the two million clips that we have on the platform. So we're very lucky today to work in about 15 uh, different markets around the world. We're working, for example, with Pearson here in the US, Hachette in Europe, the Ministry of Education um, out in uh, Asia. And there are a variety of different use cases that these uh, businesses use the Bow Clips platform for. So it may be um, integrating Bow into their existing EPUB3 uh, tools to allow courseware providers, as they're writing a page on Physics 101 in higher ed, to simply drag and drop that video of Felix Baumgartner straight into their courseware as they are creating it. So it's not on the side, it's fully embedded. Um, also, to stream that news clip of the fact that Trump has fired Comey um, directly into the classroom the next day. So no delay between kind of publishing and delivery, 18 month span, it's all current and it's up to the minute. Um, also the ability for uh, education providers to white label our platform, to put it in as a supplementary service for instructors to use, 
um, as a contemporary and up to, up to the minute uh, span of content and to derive new subscription revenues um, from that particular white labeling exercise. And then finally also to use internally as a CMS to supplement our content with all their own video and stills and align that to their own taxonomies that they use internally. So, um, yeah, as I said at the start, we've been around for about, uh, I don't know if I did say at the start, but we have been around for about just over three years now. We spent the first two years of our life really just working with the content industry to support this initiative in education. Um, and I'm delighted to say that we started selling last year. We'll do about two million of sales this year, rising to six million next year. We, uh, that's dollars, not pounds, by the way. Um, we've just, uh, in the process of closing our Series A round, I'm delighted to say that Ingram Content Groups, that some of you will know, based down in Tennessee, are supporting that Series A round again. And moving forwards, um, we expect soon to be announcing that both TED Talks, brands like Reuters, will also be joining the platform. So it is a, a wealth of resource that continues to build. It's not a, a flat archive, it's very much a sort of a live library. Um, before I head back to the rainy shores of London this evening, I am going to show you a short video. You wouldn't expect me not to show you a short video. So in one minute and 23 seconds, I'm not going to be able to show the video because it says please wrap up. So no video. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>